Hey, Patrick. Hey, good morning, Bogdan. Good morning. Uh, today, George, uh, George said he's not joining, so... Yeah, I've seen the message. I good. guess it's just going to be the two of us. Possibly. Um, let me just update our uh, agenda page. Apparently, it's missing the disclaimer. All right, so let's get started. Right. Welcome, um, welcome everyone. On uh, 2023 May 15, there is VCX community call. Um, is our antitrust policy notice? Uh, I'll just follow the script as usual. So there you go. Uh, I'll leave a, a moment to read it for listeners and attendees. All right, um, so let's get right into it. So small update on the mentorship uh, program. So uh, there was an update on Discord from the program organizers that, that they prolonged the application period of 15th. Uh, nevertheless, we already have uh, more than, I believe more than 60 applications or so received across uh, the two projects we have. So. It's uh, it's pretty a lot. Competition is high, and uh, after the application period is officially closed, we'll start uh, selecting the, the 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 mentees. Um, that's pretty much it uh, for here. We had uh, good first issues already getting created the previous week, and there are some open ones. Uh. I think uh, one problem we are sort of suffering is uh, some pe people tend to uh, not actually uh, compile the code locally and then it uh, fell CI. Uh, so I don't know, maybe we just have to uh, tweak the guidelines a little bit and make sure to maybe make it more feasible for people to, to compile it or know how to run tests or just kind of like make a checklist before submitting PR, please like try following things, make sure that the code is formatted, make sure that you have a commit signed off. Those are kind of the most common failures. I mean, after all, it's it's always up to the contributors uh, part to to get things right. But uh, I think we can still try to try to make it a bit more streamlined for them and, and make kind of a checklist. Uh, yeah, there, and there's a, there's a bunch of PRs opened. Um, there's been an ongoing conversation here, uh, the contribution from Suman TXD. Uh, let's see if we can get that closed. And there's other uh, unclosed PRs, which needs uh, attention from the, uh, the contributors. The one from Swapter and also the one from Prasang over here. Also, there was some PR closed due to inactivity. So, uh, yeah, it's it's important. It's it, it's valuable to drive the the PRs to completions. But I understand sometimes uh, it's it's alright to drop it some sometimes. So no hard feelings for those contributors. Um, it's 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 great space for another people to try to contribute. All right. Uh, anything from any any other? I don't know. Start meeting uh, points from from your side, Bogdan. 
Not really, no. Um, maybe just uh, just what you said about the contributions and the PRs failing. Um, yeah, I guess we can make some some guidelines to follow. Um, but I also think it's it's kind of a common sense, at least in compiled languages like this. Like mm. just just give it a run, you know. Um, I don't know. It's a uh, it's uh, I don't know. I'm really yeah. lacking the words, right. but yeah, maybe some some checklist, especially regarding tests. Um, those are indeed a bit more convoluted or maybe non-intuitive in terms of how to run them. So definitely mm. that could help. Um, but in terms of like just getting the the crates to compile, I think like that's some minimal effort, minimum effort mm. kind of thing. Mm. So just please do. But yeah, that's. Uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go ahead. Uh, so uh, overview of the stuff done in last weeks, a uh, whole bunch of stuff actually. So um, let's start here. Uh, there was a kind of a change or slash fix for the verifier behavior, uh, where uh, previously the verifier would send. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. It would send acknowledgement or acknowledgement message if the verification was successful, but it will then say send any message if the presentation was um, deemed as invalid proof, invalid presentation for whatever cryptographic reason. Yeah, so we would be generating the problem report there, but it wouldn't be sent. Um... And that kind of also sort of defeats the purpose in a way. Um, so yeah, essentially we're going to be sending a problem report now on failure. Yeah. So and either way, all, there always will be either egg or a problem report. Yeah, and actually, before even if it failed, uh, an egg would be sent nonetheless. So if it failed, we would be generating the problem report store oh, somewhere. Right. But we would be sending an egg regardless of what happened mm. uh, which would be quite confusing so i guess it makes more sense with the way it is now yeah yeah and uh, tying into this change there was another change uh that one is uh that one's still still in progress but i'll kind of jump jump a section ahead here uh since it's related we also where was it ah it was a uh, modification to this uh, problem report slash acknowledgements, which is still open, kind of pending for further verification and testing. Uh, but maybe I'll leave a short, you know, uh, a mic for you to briefly conclude what this is about. Yeah, so it's not, uh, I guess, that much to talk about, but essentially, um, Aries has this concept of borrowing messages from different protocols, which I'm not even sure it's something of a universal thing, but essentially um, the ACK message and the problem report messages are kind of defined in their own specifications. Um, and they're kind of generic messages, so they are defined there in terms of structure and stuff like that. but. Um, more often than not, they would, in fact, be sent as part of different protocols. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much the idea. Now, here, we basically just uh, propagated problem report to the notification message family, which only had the ACK message, is where the ACK message is defined. Um, and that's, again, as per the RFC, so it's completely fine, but there is actually I know, planned um, sometime in the future, don't really know when, but um, to kind of propagate the problem report to other protocols like credential, issue credential, and present proof, present proof uh, protocols, again, as per the RFCs. Um, the ACK message is already borrowed there, and if we are to use the ARIES terms, um, and the problem report would also uh, have to be for the pretty much the same reason like if there's an error you would be sending a problem report but um i guess it's more um kind of intuitive or convenient or self-explanatory 
when the message is part of the same uh, message family or the same protocol. And that's pretty much the idea. Mm. Right. Yeah. Thank you for, for summarizing this work. Um, these two are related, so kind of uh, merge, group them together. Now let's continue the overview. So another big piece uh, which was done was uh, we've merged the DID slash DDO resolver. Uh, that was a huge, uh, huge uh, undertaking, huge effort from Mergi and also reviewers. It was probably the most discussed, uh, kind of the most heavily reviewed uh, PR in terms of uh, number of comments, almost 200. Uh, so yeah, this adds a bunch of um, crates um, to the repo. Um, and uh, I was, uh, we, were, we were discussing that uh, this could actually be uh, taken out, out of Aries VCX under perhaps a separate, a new Hyperledger repo some sort of, I'm, I'm not sure how to name it yet, but uh, some sort of DID resolver perhaps, or DID utils, I don't know. And uh, it's it's pretty universal. It's not uh, related to Aries essentially at all. Um, and we are gonna simply consume this from Aries VCX, um, but I believe there might be other projects which find this useful and uh, uh, probably will be cleaner if it's and less confusing if it's, Outside of various VCX, uh, perhaps it can also help with adoption too. So props to props to Mergi. Um, I just need to get this integrated now into Aries VCX, but uh, I believe that it shouldn't be too big of an effort at this point. Uh, Linking to the DD, the DID resolver, we, we also have implemented, uh, this is wrong link apparently. Uh, we also have implemented the DID web uh, method. So that, that's pretty much uh, says, says, says it all. There's a link to the spec. Um, it's possible now. Now, now, essentially, we have two DID methods support: DID soft and DID web. And I believe the net next one we will be adding would be DID indie, which um, should be supported by Indie Ledger um, in uh, an upcoming future. I don't know exactly the timelines for the ledger, but um, I believe it should be this year. Um, next up, uh, we had uh, a per good first issue uh, emerged again from Swapter, our recent contributor. Uh, so yeah, thanks for driving this to the completion. Uh, we have this merged. Um, and lastly, we have some CI refactoring related to iOS uh, and uh, uh, this has been approved from from like our side, but we yet need to get it tested. And we asked um, uh, the guys from uh, from Switzerland who are using iOS and LVCX in general, including iOS, to give it a run. So we'll see uh, what they come up with, and uh, if it's all good, then, then we can go ahead and merge this. All right, now to stuff which is uh, in progress right now. So uh, I'll start with the uh, smaller stuff. So we have a good first issue ongoing here, as I mentioned before, from Suman TXD. Uh, and this is an uh, ongoing conversation here. So uh, um, yeah, happy to see, happy to see active conversations. And let's hope that uh, Suman TXD can, uh, can, uh, Finish the finish the work needed to get them merged. Um, and next up, um, we have this uh, stuff we've been talking last week about. Uh, I think we can leave this point as the last because that might be the richest discussion. Um, and uh, we also have a new PR again, a new feature, sort of. 
uh, implementation of the ledger interface using NVDR proxy. So for those who are not aware, NVDR proxy is a, a web service which enables accessing in the ledger through an uh, HTTP API. And so technically now you could use, especially in server environment, you don't always have access to uh, maybe internet over zero MQ due to uh, like uh, security limitation, some, some security compliance uh, limitations, restrictions. Uh, and so you could instead just kind of call the HTTP proxy. Um, and for that, you would use this, you would opt into the NDVDR proxy implementation of the ledger trade. So uh, it will be transparent for the rest of the RGD6 code base, but you'll be actually uh, calling the ledger through an HTTP server. Uh, so this is this is pretty cool stuff. Um, so pending reviews, I, I reviewed myself, but uh, um, welcome, I'm surely. Uh, confident that uh, Mergi will appreciate further reviews. Um, yeah, next up we had the problem report that's already covered uh, before. And then the holder implementation state pattern. Um, I believe that uh, George mentioned he he was kind of sick, so there wasn't a much, uh, much new updates here. I also, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, George is actually working on like a separate branch and this is kind of old version here. Uh, so this is just kind of um, on hold right now or on hold slash uh, progressing little by little. And so getting back to one, one point I, I, I skipped here, uh, that was the trade, uh, the, not this one, the, Uncred's ledger trade draft, uh, which we discussed uh, last week quite a bit, but we uh, didn't yet conclude it, how to go about it. So we discussed the uh, associated types last week. And now since, since, since we are just uh, two of us today, uh, Bogdan, maybe we can just kind of uh, discuss it further, maybe maybe look into like uh, implement some implementation details just kind of zoom in and try to try to publicly find uh, pu publicly on this call try to find a solution or conclusion how to go about it so we can get started right so um i think there is a like in the agenda there is a point about splitting the traits so it's yeah, kind, it's yeah, kind yeah. of related um we're probably going to drop the trait prefix from the crate name yeah i don't know how to name it i uh, just thought just just without the trait i guess it's fine that that should make sense mm. um yeah so like this this is one aspect of of these core traits so rsvcx core pretty much just contains all these traits but the naming is kind of weird and nevertheless um like to to summarize our discussion uh probably the starting point was about the ledger and mergy running into issues about or related to the fact that there's just one ledger trait that combines both read and write operations and that makes things kind of difficult sometimes because a lot of, um, in a lot of situations, you only just need read access, which, which is obviously more permissive and requires less stuff. Um, and because of that, uh, like this would be one reason to split the ledger trait into something like ledger read and ledger write. They don't necessarily have to be in separate Traits, really, I think just one is enough. Um, but regardless, so that's one thing. Then there is the Anon creds trait, um, which similarly uh, like contains all these operations for all these um, I don't know, actors, roles, roles, I guess would be a, a good word, um, which 
once again, doesn't really make sense. Like you might not even be interested in using one of the protocols or you might only be interested in being a, a prover and not a verifier. So why would you be bothered with implementing verifier operations, which you can technically always just do as like return some error or stuff. But um, I guess it's more um, explicit and, and self-explanatory if these things are separated. And this was actually your idea. Um, so there's this, this aspect of splitting stuff based on their domain so that implementing them would be um, easier for, for consumers and for us as well. Then, um, I guess there's the idea of, okay, we are going to split them, but how exactly should we go like it, it's not only about splitting them but right now the the traits and the way they are defined i kind of um locked in a bit in the based on the indie uh, implementation or the indie specification um although like there's an implementation for the indie ecosystem for, for each of those of these traits but um I guess like the that was the the main um, driver for implementing them, and that was the main that was the main reference. So they were kind of designed around the idea of indie. But um, there's also the the point that we kind of want to make them ledger agnostic or ecosystem agnostic, so that um, the operations could be virtually implemented for any any type of ledger or ecosystem that is that exists right now or will exist later on and this is a bit tricky because the specifications are not really well defined at least for uh, for anon creds but um and i guess this is where the the point of associated types comes from so for instance there are these types um or, or data structures like schema and credential definition and and stuff like that where um there's not really there should be but Currently, there's not really a, a common specification for them. And last week, I believe, we pretty much discussed about whether to use something, to use um, associated types so that each implementation could define its own types. So for instance, for ND, you would have an ND schema or ND credential definition, which are actually already defined, I believe, in, in some of the ND crates. Um, and you could use that. And then if you want to use, I don't know, some, some other uh, implementation or ecosystem, um, for instance, the, the work that uh, George has been onto regarding the, the newer um, VDR tools, I guess, like the split crates. So they're still indie, but they're a bit different. And while some things might be common and then they can still be implemented as common, some other things will be different. Uh, yeah, and so the two options that we discussed were either to define our own types for schema, credential definition, revocation registry, and whatnot, and kind of, I don't know, like brute force them into all the approaches and hope everything will work, um, or that, I don't know, just cut corners to make it work. But I, I, it might be possible, George says that AFJ does it. Um, I, I don't know honestly like the the entire scope of of age afj and what they like whether they are really that uh, ecosystem agnostic or they're also kind of um more targeting indie a bit more but regardless so there is that option of creating our own types um which might work but i'm unsure of and so as not to risk it and just work I don't know, maybe for, for some time, a couple of weeks, just to realize that um, we got the point we're cutting, that we're cutting too many corners, I would just go with the associated types uh, way of doing things. So then if in the future we realize that, or even this, just the specification kind of stabilizes and we realize, hey, you know what, we can use the exact same type in all of these trait implementations, then like in the very beginning to kind of accommodate that you just have to set the associated types to the exact same type and then everything will just be fine. 
uh, and then you can remove them as well. Like removing them will be would be much easier rather than adding them later on. Um, so that's kind of my my argument about it. Then there's also one other point that I discussed with uh, Mergi last week, and that's the fact that, um, for instance, for the ledger, and the fact that these um, that the trait right now is kind of um, kind of taken kind of taking indy as a reference and the indy specification as a reference the trait would have to be kind of heavily modified to basically and the traits so we're going to split them into read and write but um we would have to modify them to kind of accommodate pretty much all possible implementations um and i guess the main um Maybe the main point of this would be the revocation registry methods, like working with the revocation registry. So leaving the, the type for the revocation registry aside, whether it's gonna be common or an associated type, but each ecosystem can kind of implement their own way of working with that. And for instance, in Indy, there's, um, they use deltas, I believe. You correct me if I'm wrong, but. I think that's the case, but that's not necessarily a standard. Like they can have, they can work in pretty much any way. So the way to accommodate that again, I, I believe, would be to have an associated type for something like um, I don't know, revocation registry options or some something like that. So then, when you implement the, let's say, the ledger read trait for um, for Indy, you would pass or you would set an associated type for the revocation registry options specific to Indy with the delta. So you would have a to, a to field and a from field, these dates that you would use to generate the delta or create the delta. Um, but for other ledgers, you would have, you could define a different type and you could have whatever options are needed to accommodate the operations there. But uh, correct me uh, yeah, if I'm wrong as well, but uh, I guess these are actually kind of two different issues. I mean, you could technically have like, uh, let's yeah, say- Yeah, they are. Right? They are. Like, you can have yeah. common types and just use the associated types for this kind of stuff. Yeah, like, I, it... I don't even have any other better way to handle this. Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of a better way to handle this, uh, like the this options kind of approach. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you define like right now, there's I believe there are some delta methods in the in the ledger trait which are really really don't belong there, right? Because um, it's not shared it, for uh, other yeah, it's it's not yeah, it's not universal. They're not universal. Um, but on the other hand, you kind of need them to be in the trait because regardless of the interface or just maybe not not a delta. Uh, methods, but the revocation registry methods, they need to be in the trade so that, because it's a common operation that you would be using on any, in any ecosystem. So they need to be there, but they need to be uh, configurable like that to kind of um, act differently or behave differently based on, um, based on your implementation. So the associated type um, is the way to go, I think. And yeah, about the, the schema and credential definition and like the types themselves, I would still go with associated types. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's maybe just do like a quick. I, 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 I think I'm uh, pretty on board with the associated types for the options. But maybe let's just uh, give a, a bit of a review for like. Uh, I think the important question to answer is like if we were to. Like I, if we were to uh, you know use the um, like shared types, which I think would be like preferable if possible, because then you then you like streamline all the interfaces to like single type, and you don't have to like have like different versions of like let's say verifier which works well, like with different. But there wouldn't be, hold on, there wouldn't be a different version of a verifier. Like the the trait implementation would be like you, you just implement a ledger and then 
when you work with um, like you wouldn't work with an indie ledger as a as an implementation you would work with a type that implements the ledger read so you can use generics or if you want trade objects um, like that's that's the entire point of it you don't care like there's I, I've thought about this a lot and I see absolutely no downside of using associated types they're going to be just as generic or, or easy to use but leaving like we just added flexibility so a verifier or a prover will not care what implementation they get they just care that they get a type that implements ledger read or or ledger write or something like that and that's that's the point and then the trait or the implementation in like let's say the in the ledger read would internally work with the associated types that's pretty much it But you have to, when you're, for example, implement like uh, um, when you're building instant, oh, let's see. Uh, can we, can, can, can we uh, revisit the kind of the demo? You, do you have the demo from the last week? Can we kind of look at it again? I don't know if it's uh there anymore well, let me see because i uh, <laughs> i accidentally committed it I, oh actually i think there should be because i committed it so it should be in the last commit let me see mm. i think you can actually just look it up if you go into pr and uh-huh uh going to pr uh right 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 pr pr and and just look at the at the commits And that was uh, maybe maybe commits actually, hmm. or is it there? Hold on. Yeah. Oops. So just open up the the previous commit. I guess this one. Yeah. Yeah. That should be it. So I think they're here. Yeah. There is something there at the top. Right, yeah, yeah, this uh, seems somewhat familiar, yeah. Right, so... Yeah, we have, uh, l let me try to kind of rehearse this. Uh, so yeah, we would have like ledger read, let's say, and that will be for in the VDR ledger, VDR tools ledger, maybe we'll have uh, eventually um, like a header ledger, let's say. Uh, that would have its own they would assign some sort of header uh, unknown credit schema <clears throat> as a associated type for schema. And then, then we have an unknown credits verifier. Uh, and when you, yeah, right. Yeah, like that's the thing, like you need to have like, in the anon creds verifier and then you would also need to have a different trade say you would, you, would, you would still have an in the anon creds verifier even if the types were common because the operations like the method implementations would most likely be different so i, I don't think you get away with just implementing one anon creds verifier because then it wouldn't be a trait it would be just a type with some methods so it still need different types for each implementation. Right. Yeah. 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 Of course. Uh, different type for each implementation. Hmm. So, it, like, it, this is not about like you don't want to use your in in wherever these are getting used. You don't use. I don't know if if you use if they are used right now, but. I hope not, but we're never like essentially going to be using Indian and cred verifier directly. We will ask for an interface, which is the trait. So we're going to ask for a type 
T that implements Anon Cred Verifier. And whatever that's going to be, that's that's cool. Um, so then the caller or the consumer will say, yeah, I'm working in the Indie ecosystem or Heather ecosystem. So I'm just, uh, I'm going to implement these types and here you go. Um, but the, the associated types are pretty much contained within the trait, just getting used there or getting used and even up and or down technically in the stack. Yeah, but you will have like, uh, say, let me, let me copy paste this into, um, I don't know, I'll open it here. Some random location. Uh, right, but so then you would have this, you would have uh, in the in the unencrypted verifier, uh, yeah, that would be some sort of particular implementation implementing the unencrypted interface somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. right? So we have this trade somewhere which uh, declares those associated types. Uh, right. And I don't care, it's very fire. Uh, is I don't care, it's, yeah. So for example, verify proof, right? Let's take this one as example. You might want to look at the implementation in the PR though because you will need strong typing here i mean not need necessarily but that was also one aspect of this like we're taking strings everywhere which we don't really want to do um yeah, yeah exactly so, so then, there's also yeah. that so then you would have like this kind of schema right the defend defined it on a trade right you would use it for let's say here schema. yeah yeah you have to say and... self self uh column column schema yeah right uh and then um that's the that's the inter the trade with the associated types declaration then you have the actual implementations for the trade where yeah you would um and we are assuming here that we have clients which return kind of schema which looks uh maybe it's some different fields or whatever it's differently structured um so what you read this is an crit or it will be let's say um ah here we okay Right. This is verifier. I'll do it like this. I'll look this up. It's confusing now. Right. So that's uh that's the verifier. Verifier needs uh have a variable schema uh type and then we have implementations for this. Uh no, yeah import and then we have like let's say that would be like in the creds verifier okay. yeah but the, the other way around we implement a trait for a type oh yeah okay schema all right and then we would say for example yeah something like this in the schema and this could be oh yeah and we were saying actually um and this would be some sort of yeah in the type then we could have say hedera the other side yeah 
Yeah, well, and see, and this is like, uh, hmm. Yeah, it would probably have a like Hedera schema there in the implementation. So what I'm thinking is, you know, like, uh, then uh, would, would would we act, would this be actually two different implementations? You know, that that's what bothers me, I guess, about it. Um, I feel uh, like. I don't know. There's differences on ledger, and you have to resolve those like schema. Mm -hmm. But the actual like verification code, you know, I think that should be this. This shouldn't actually be like two different implementations. So you're simply verifying anon crits like uh, proof. You know, I I don't see what the actual difference would be. Like you already resolved. Then why, then why is this a trait? Like if it's um, if it would be a common implementation for all, like virtually any ecosystem, then why not just have a type? Yeah, it's uh the reason why it's straight is because yeah it, it is shielding away the actual implementation, and the main reason is that we you know we're migrating from VDR tools to the the modular uh, the Credix library. So then we can swap out the implementations, but um, technically, like, um, as for as for the other ledgers and like credentials based on other ledgers, the only difference really should be the way you resolve these kind of primitives from the ledger, but then. From then on, you have these like, I mean, I know it's maybe not perfectly fleshed out yet because it's like uh, there's some to do's here. But definitely like long term idea is to have the standard. So, so the, uh, there should be any differences like you, you just the, the deviation, the differences between how to get this resolve this data from the ledger. But then after you have that finished this IO, the verification for anon creds, it you know that's described here how to verify anon creds proof this crypto this is what's implemented by vdr tools so technically right, but the, the vdr tool should be able to verify like uh header hash graph based you know anchored um cred presentation for example okay which then, we now kind of now when I see it this way, like oh you know that we I see that uh, we would have two anon creds verifiers, but hey that actually right so make sense. if that's the case, but then if that's the case, like even the two implementations, so there's VDR tools and Credex, are shouldn't let's say shouldn't Credex be able to verify what VDR tools is able to verify like uh, what even have two implementations for just these two yeah know. they do they're doing the same thing well true. right 90 percent right. it's just the uh, vdr tools is old and everybody kind of should right. be critics now right so then again why even have like I, i'm i'm fine with this you know this uh the ecosystem itself <clears throat> way better than me but um then if you if you're saying and it makes sense so the ledger stuff is agnostic but then anon creds um would be kind of different then why no, no that's that more of the other way around right like the ledger stuff is a little bit different maybe across the ledger but then the anon creds verification code and st stuff like that that should right, be got it. okay so then why not just make this some actual types and not a trait and it wouldn't be an interface it would just be like something a type anon creds verifier the, the, the reason is because we you know because we are trying to get rid of the vdr tools but it just can't it's difficult to do it in like one go so but i'm still trying to understand so if they do the same thing hmm. why can't we have one uniform implementation like why not let's say i could do it in the scope of this pr i could look at credex implement it here 
and just say, we're going to be verifying all add-on creds through credix and that should be fine it should be backwards compatible right yeah 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 so let's just do that then uh and like yeah that, that's like the kind of the ideal like just get rid of the vdr tools uh i know you are taking careful approach about that because i think it's like uh kind of a big piece of like it's a, such a lot of work and so it's being done for Holder and so let me. But that's that's not what I mean. Uh, if you're drawing this diagram for me, uh, I, I hope for it's for everyone time. watching. Okay. Uh, yeah, go on. I'll just kind of maybe draw on a bit. Okay, yeah. So I understand that we have like the old VDR tools and the new Credix stuff. And mm. my so from what i understand okay we we can have interfaces in the form of traits for ledger like ledger read ledger write and for wallet again maybe those are different i don't know they they could be different so but for add-on creds like right now it's a trait which is why i'm bringing it up as a trait but from our discussion right now i understand that okay but this stuff is supposed to be universal like there should be just one add-on creds verifier that can verify add-on creds from any ecosystem provided maybe a generic mm. with a ledger or something like that doesn't matter but mm. um so if that's the case right now we have it as a trait and there's one implementation for vdr tools the old indie libraries and credix the new indie libraries why implement why have these two implementations why not simply modify the indie implementation to use credix directly like why have something new so it's a it's a yeah i mean are they, like are they compatible do they do if they do the same thing and they're compatible then why keep both uh, Why not just have one? That's the final desired state, and it's just a matter of like it's just kind okay, of. I get, I get that it's the, the final. Approach, you know. No, no. Hear me just, out. Yeah. I understand it's the final. Like that's where we want to get to, mm -hmm. but why not do that directly? Yeah, just as I saying, it's kind of matter of approach we took. Maybe you know, even like before you started with us. And we was it wasn't so long time ago. It was like basically George started this work. He George introduced this, this interfaces to kind of enable you know uh, like a iterative move from VDR tools to Credix. Otherwise, like you would have to like uh, like modify lots of code here and there. And and I mean they're mostly similar, but there are there might be but why okay there might be differences is especially maybe on like issuer side i'm not okay. we just we just don't quite know you know how different they are they in the after all they do it doing kind of the same thing but those interfaces are somewhat different it's not exactly like maybe one it's not exactly one to one mirror they kind of basically when when these you know those module libraries were incepted the way it was created they took in the you know, VDR tools or in the SDK back then, and they split it out into small libraries, but also did a whole bunch of, I guess, refactoring and tweaked okay. APIs a little bit. Uh, um, so I, okay, I, so I we, we were not confident ever to just do it in one go. So that's why okay. we hidden behind interfaces. I see. All right. So what do you think now? Like, can it, I mean, I, I can also look into it a bit. Uh, but at the top of your head, do you think it can be done like that directly, or because it's it's all about this? Like the 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 whole argument against associated types right now for this trait is, but we should just have one implementation. But then mm -hmm. you're saying, I mean, we want to have just one implementation, but we cannot have just one implementation right now. So we could still, like as a as an iterative approach, have the trait with associated types implement both credx and vdr tools variants and later on when vdr tools is dropped just uh, transform the credx implementation into a, just a singular type and not a trait interface uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I. That also in the in the case that you know when when the specification is stabilized and we know that okay, we can have just a singular type. It can do everything we need, like regardless of ecosystem or library or whatever. Hmm. I, yeah, maybe we can have a look at this um, Cardex. I would like to see uh, how how the code in the Cardex. Uh, how do I find this library? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like assume assuming that like this library, the the credits library, it can like verify like unknown credits, you know, unknown credits proofs credential etc it, yeah but you see my point like there are a lot we're making a lot of assumptions right now and what i'm where i'm trying to get at is these assumptions might turn out true which is perfectly fine like if we go this way it's not hard to like even if we have this straight implementation with associated types it's not hard to transform like okay let's drop the other implementations let's just have one anon cred verifier and it's going to be just a singular type one structure and no longer a trait and we're just going to be passing that around that's easy to refactor um but if the assumptions don't turn out true and there would in fact be differences or maybe the anon creds will get stabilized in like after two years from now, we can still work kind of like pretty much seamlessly in but, the meantime. But we don't want to support like other ledgers right now. And I, I don't think it's a strong assumption to say that Anon Credit is a standard. And if like Hedera, you know, if somebody in on a Hedera hash graph wants to like use Anon Credit, they need to adhere to to this uh to this uh Anon Credit RFC. Uh which originates from Indy. Mm. And there's a library which is like implementing this essentially as an uncred dash R as a library library. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there will be more like uh, libraries. Okay, so fair enough. Right, but it's not even just about libraries, but leaving that aside. So let's say, okay, Credex can satisfy all ecosystems. We still have the VDR problem, like the VDR tools problem. And um, again, like if, if these two are not fully compatible or if Credex is not fully backwards compatible, so to say with VDR tools, and there are implementation differences and I don't know, maybe they require some different arguments or some stuff like that, then you cannot just have a singular type, at least not right now, while it's in use. When it won't be used anymore and we can draw VDR tools, then we can transform the implementation into a singular type, like I was saying. No, but I mean, that, like... Uh... Mm. So I'm, I'm, like right now I'm brainstorming. I'm not saying we mm. should do this. Like ideally from what I could gather what I would do would be to look at the credits implementation and VDR tools implementation and see whether we can just start using credits from now on and gradually drop VDR tools. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that would be the ideal scenario and just have singular structure types for anon creds verifier, holder, issuer, prover, whatever. But I don't know if it can be done right now. So yeah right uh... so like kind of to summarize what i'm saying is if we review this there are basically two outcomes either credix is like can fully support and is fully backwards compatible with vdr tools in which case i think uh or i would say we can uh implement singular types using the credix libraries drop vdr tools or if they're not backwards compatible and we cannot just have a singular implementation, have the trait, have whatever associated types are needed and just like maybe for this case, there aren't even, there are, they aren't even needed. 
I think there might be a ledger needed, but that can also just be like based on a generic that implements the ledger read trade or something like that. Um, but if they're not compatible, then have the interface and have two separate implementations for now. And then when we fully decide we want to draw VDR tools, drop it and just combine the trade with the credx implementation into that singular type that we want to achieve nonetheless yeah and and i mean i generally agree i just i want to point out like i would uh maybe mainly mainly try to focus on like just yeah just getting rid of vdr tools uh, and maybe not maybe not concerned like even though we've been mentioning it throughout discussion i've been mentioning it through discussion you know kind of maybe step further like thinking in terms of unknown creds and different ledgers uh, that's something we need to keep in mind but like uh, the the main goal really and actually the reason why those interfaces were kind of created in the first place were to enable like yeah like iterative migration away from the vdr tools which is essentially abandoned library now to the smaller ones which uh there's much more traction because akapa is using it nfj is using it uh, there's more, there's more people around it getting better support right. so that's like the utmost like priority you know other other than the the riff state machine stuff we do is to 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 get away from the vdr tools okay so then i uh, and, and, and maybe just uh, we can let it go depending on the differences but just one more note like basically you know we are like 75 percent there because the only thing we are really missing now is the issuer so so the prover and holder that's uh um, george has already you know implemented those the verify too so you can use uh, like on mobile you can verifier go... implemented too uh yeah actually even I, I believe even verifier yeah okay because that one was really simple i think it was just like one function but the issuer is just like a bit more tri like there's more work on issuer and that's that's right. pending to to be done and explore uh, and and uh, it's kind of important for us to maybe test uh, that if you were previously VDR tools based issuer that you can kind of keep on using the you know if you switch to the new implementation with the credx issuer mm -hmm. they still you know just keep on going and for example revoke the credential which was previously issued with vdr tools i, I believe it right. should be possible but it's important to make sure of that right um okay so i can i can work on that um and based on the discussion then i would just try to like it, it would require a bit of research but if by all means possible i would just have singular types for all these implementations and just not, not have interfaces anymore um right but i see i see wait mm. so how would that work uh you would have can you elaborate on that you would have singular type so you would yeah so instead of having an anon creds verifier trait and you implement it once for indie once for header once for whatever you just have oh, yeah. a structure anon creds verifier that verifies anon creds. yeah 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 but but to get there but to get there i find those i find those traits useful because you know it enables us to be 75 percent there but you're you're killing me patrick <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't so okay like should we do it the traits way and if so how should we go about it or should we do it the singular type kind of way like uh, like, uh, like in my opinion like uh, the whole the whole point of this we started from you were looking at the at the traits and saying but why are there two implementations and the we decided that kind of the goal is to have um you know just one implementation yeah. just one add-on creds verifier um why would we still have the trait then 
yeah like once we fully migrate and we find out that it's okay and we can you know switch from vdr tools to the credx then i agree then we can we can technically dump those interfaces but I okay just, so this is useful for the migration from vdr tools to those smaller libraries all right so then we go with the other option that i mentioned that we make that we keep the traits and have two implementations one for vdr tools one for credx once everything is said and done and we can drop vdr tools then we uh, combine the trait with the credx implementation into just one type where i don't know basically the credx implementation will absorb the trait if you want just not have an interface anymore just one type Hmm. I don't know, like because so that, that's what you're saying from uh, uh, my understanding. Well, um, if if you're gonna you know look, look at this, um, I mean, uh, my, it might be the way, uh, like, and I won't like you know get in your way if if you find if you find it to be like better way, you know, just implementation wise, useful to use uh, associate associated types here. Why not? Maybe I'm just well. The associated that... types, honestly, are not even about the anon creds part. I think they're more about, um, like they they would be they're actually needed in the ledger traits hmm. more than they are needed here. I think they're needed here too, but you kind of have to pass a ledger nonetheless. So, um, yeah, you regardless have to make use like you can use them indirectly like that um but yeah so for ledgers we definitely need a trait an interface with different implementations and um yeah again the 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 point is because if you look at the draft the pr hmm. uh we're a bit over time can you stay a bit longer maybe we can wrap this up and yeah yeah we, i think it's good discussion okay cool yeah yeah it is so um Uh, sorry, where I'll am I? Let you this is not it. Um, the draft right here. Yeah, and again, look at that previous commit where there were mm. these. More a bit to anon credits. Right. So um, you'll see that basically the ledger traits are the ones that actually implement these things. Um, and these these associated types. Like you, I think you might have to scroll down a bit. Um, or is this just that? Ah, this is the anon creds file. Okay, maybe you can look at the ledger file. Uh, there's right. nothing else here, but uh, in that comment, but I can. Ah, fair enough. Just look at the latest one. Yeah. All right. I'll take a look I'll at that. Sure that file. Yeah. So just look at the ledger dot rs. Hmm. So this is where they are actually defined, because again, like they might be common but they might be not they might not be um and i don't really know right now and the safest option in my opinion is to go with the associated types if they turn out to be common it's easy to remove those but mm. if they're not then it's going to be a bit more difficult to add them later all right yeah okay then we can we can uh Think we can do the associated apps here, but then um yeah, I guess for now we would just have like uh, in this stuff and then 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 um uh, the anon crit interface. Um I, I, I don't know exactly what this does, so I haven't taken such a close look at the methods, but it's likely that um the 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 anon creds implementations like we might not even need a an associated type there we can just take a generic for ledger read like a type and then implementing ledger read and take the generic in the function rather than bind it to the trait to the interface so then it will be general enough like you can use you can use the same implementation with whatever ledger you want um and I guess that would be that would be the way to go. So I guess that's what you were more concerned about, and it makes sense. So um, yeah, like I was con mostly like uh, concerned with the fact that the anon credits prover shouldn't just 
even know about the ledger exists like maybe the credential schema was taken from a te you know text file or or a, or a printed text or whatever it should be agnostic to existence of ledger basically or, or anon create stuff or, or, or all of it it's okay taken from some ledger or some from some of the base but it doesn't matter from what should be the same thing for anon create standards although just drafting or fleshing out yet okay but mm, then that means we do need common types like just one schema type and one something one credential definition type because if like if this is supposed to be a singular type um and this accepts a schema and a credential definition and stuff like that then um, hmm. like yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it should be. I, I think I, so. I know, I know, I know it should be. <laughs> um, like that, that's the goal, but. It's so like, if when you look at the indie scan, for example, like this is schema. And when you, you know, when you, uh, this won't be like somehow, and, and the in indie crits are, uh, anon crits RS, this stuff here, this is all, you know, originates from Indie. The stuff you see here, this is the way it's done on Indie. And and this is the standard forming. The other implementations like Hedera, or I don't know who's doing it, Hedera, or like uh, um, Cardano, I think, and I don't know who else. Um, they are they are they are following this, you know. So, and and when when we look how it looks on like credential definition schema is like way too simple claim definition then it has like um uh, basically this this piece oh, no 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 it's kind of simplified version of the transaction this is some ledger stuff this is nothing nothing this is the actual transaction data and this is the actual, oh, this is some metadata. This is also metadata. This is the, you know, anon create stuff. And so this is the standard right piece. This is what uh, the other other ledgers or you know, implementation also have to do. If well, you take a look at this like primary, I'm surely gonna, it, it's here. I think I but looked at, at something, like we did look at, I think the schema and there was something that Indy was adding on top of this. There was one field, but I don't remember which one. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I think it's just a matter of, we can open up that Anon Crits um, project. Maybe. Um, Uh, in the share, shared RS repo, and that has few things in the critics. Um, maybe I'll just check it out. I think I already have it, but I'm not sure where. Ah, okay, it's already there. Um, just a moment. Sharing again. There we go. So in the critics, and in the critics uh, depends on the in the database, in the data types, I believe. Yeah, I think this is where they're defined. Yeah, yeah, in the data types here. And that specifies as an anon crits types kind of, which includes yeah, so, ledger primitives kind of. Right. And so, schema one. Yeah, and this is like number. Yeah, is yeah. Their addition. Let's say let's say credential definition for example. 
Transportation. Right. So it has a ID, schema, signature type. Schema ID. What's in this scan? This is credential defi claim definition, is credential definition. Um, schema ID. It's not here. Signature type. Ah, that's a schema ID. Okay, that's not part of the transaction. That would be essentially like the this this thing mm -hmm. here. So. Okay. That would be basically, uh, I guess, this one maybe. Transaction. Mm. What about the sequence number in the schema? Yeah, there's not a sequence number here apparently. No, this is the credential definition, the schema. Yeah, schema, right. Yeah, sequence, uh, it's option here, though. No. Uh, interesting. To read names, let's go to schemas in this can. Because essentially, like, if Anon creds is kind of was drive uh, driven by by Indy, then if we're to use some common types, why would we even define our own when we can just use these ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um... Because if it's aim, it's supposed to be a common standard. Then this. This is it, right? Hmm. Differential definition. I, I don't know. I, that's uh, I find confusing why there's sequence number here. Uh, Can you see how it's used? Can you do like some yeah, search yeah. references or something? Like there's like uh, so there's some to uh, mapping to string. Um, Create credential definition. So when you are creating credential definition, for example, in the node requires the publish schema ID field uh, is schema sequence number. So I mm -hmm. guess when you're creating credential definition in in the ledger, is a yeah is a issuer then you need to know right and this is what i was getting at you see so this this doesn't sound like anon cred stuff this sounds like indie specific stuff yeah but but keep in mind that this is like creating credential definition so this is actually happening outside of those anon creds you know issuer and verification pr uh, protocols those aries protocols like you would have to do this as an issuer, you know, prior right. to issuing any credential, you have to write right. something in the ledger. And that, that's not, that might not be standardized, you know, how to write credential definition on this ledger or that ledger. That probably, I don't think that will be standardized, but what definitely is going, should and will be is trying to be standardized is the like the, you know, resolving part. Uh, I want to mm -hmm. resolve schema, I want to resolve credential definition from this ledger, that ledger. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see the other usage. I see. Seems like the okay. sequence number is only for this is create current. Yeah, it's the same thing. It seems like it's only for creating the credential definition, which is in this Indy does it in its own way. Okay. But then, like the then mm. I guess it's probably the case with the others. Like this should be uh, more like shared. Like this is. The revocation registry, they're just like pure crypto. There's not much stuff here. It all boils down to some URSA accumulator, some points on a curves, elliptic curves. All right. I, okay. I think we should be returning these types, like working with these types in the yeah, in, in those in 
trade interfaces, as, as you said. Yeah, well, I don't know about that now. So, because even if you look like, I think you can look at schema, um, like there is some some schema ID. Can you can we look at that? What is that? Is that just a new type? Well, a couple type. Yeah, this is some sort of. Um... Uh, it's really just. Struct. And then just a new type. Yeah, it's a, but essentially that will be referring okay. to this string. I, I got it. Yeah. Idea yeah. of this. Yeah. 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 Um, Well, hmm, I don't know. I gotta gotta think about it some more. But okay, so then then we can have in this case like common types for these operations, and it makes sense. Um, but looking at this, I don't know if this is necessarily the way to go about it like whether we should expose that because then then again that seems like it seems like a schema for interacting with indy what we i guess should be aiming for is if we define our own types let's say we create our own schema type then we can convert it into the indy types which can be passed to the indy ledger or whatever hmm. I, I, know, I, I, I wouldn't I, I I but you know like yeah this is like concern when you want to like support other ledgers but um but isn't this the goal of the library like I know we are primarily targeting indie right now but mm -hmm. I think it's worth thinking about it from the get-go um in terms of this agnosticity rather but than i think this is something they need you know they or we as a community need to solve in this library you know this i mean otherwise like uh yeah we would have to like re-implement these things and it's already here i think it's uh, it, the, problem, but... the problem should be solved here like the the uh, actually let me let me check one one more thing i, I know there's like also like something called anon creds rs which is something very similar to credx it's like a, some sort of small further iteration on the cred eggs there's anon creds rs repo and i don't know you just they extracted in the credx i know there's just like some sort of small differences and um, but i want to see what's actually in here so source okay there's data types here let's see if this is any more generic it looks very similar Aha, uh -huh. there's not, ah. Uh, yeah, this seems better. This seems better, yeah. But uh, I guess it will be pretty similar. Yeah, I guess it's ultimately the same thing, yeah, it's but pretty... pretty much agnostic to what they did in here. Hmm. So we should probably take those types from here then. Yeah, that, that looks a bit better, honestly schema there's also some other stuff which uh, revocation status list which is for example not in the anon creds in the in the in the shared rx right and let's see what else is here services what is that issuer hmm create schema some generic what is the generic what the issue id something what is yeah to create schema hmm it's an issue id and the issue id is what uh, i'll check out that project so we can take a look more easily i think i again have it Yeah, I have it. Yeah, so that looks better. Um, 
from like just a, a first quick look. Um, and yeah, ideally, I guess the goal would be to just use that, like. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this looks pretty like generic. because they, they they it looks like um whoever did this kind of targeted the anon creds rfc just looking at the uh, not the rfc sorry the like the specification just looking at the specification alone rather than kind of uh, considering indie or something like that which is again the goal to have these things uniform across any ecosystem Yeah, the initial implementation of Anon Creds RS is derived from in the shared RS. Yeah. So, and then it's a question like just uh, how to kind of um, no, I don't know exactly how different Anon Creds RS is from like the, the It doesn't have the indie specific stuff from yeah. what I see, like sequence number and whatever operations are happening under the hood, which are indie specific. And that's what I didn't really like about like that indie data types. Like I know mm. they need it, I understand they need it, but they need it for their ledger and their ecosystem. And we don't want that. So this seems better. Mm. Uh, I'll need to have a closer look, but. Yeah, just um, I'm wondering now, like, let's say, uh, you know, assuming that we kind of um, use this, want to use this, uh, how, what's the impact on the existing critics uh, kind of implementations? But I think... That's what I don't know. I assume there's a conversion in place. Mm, I I don't, I don't know, because that's, that's the problem with having two types from different crates. And even if we create our own types, consumers would have, consumers of our library would have this problem because then there's this, there's the orphan rule in Rust. So we wouldn't be able to convert from a, a foreign type to another foreign type, hmm. which would ultimately be the case regardless of what you do. You would technically have to like create your own type and convert from one to the other, I guess. Mm -hmm. That would be, that would be, that sounds like a workaround, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we can, uh, I guess, kind of wrap it up. I think. Uh, yeah, I think we should, we but we can look into this. I'll, I'll have a look and yeah. Mm. Yeah, we'll just have to. Well, yeah, the, the, the goal is to, to migrate to, to this stuff right um, when was this contributed uh yeah it was like they're still like pretty active still here yeah it seems like uh uh when it was the oldest commit oldest i see three years ago uh, so i guess the first time, so Okay, well, uh, I guess we have uh, food for thought and uh, some some stuff to research. Uh, I think we we have the direction, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just quickly jump back to like our agenda to kind of finish it up. Um, so yeah, the breakdown of Aries V6 core into smaller stuff. We'll just have to figure out those types and like uh, how to go about maybe migrating the critics to like shall we first migrate actually the critics to anon crits or or because then we so we wouldn't have like three different implementations at once like vdr tools and in the mm -hmm. critics and uh, anon crits but it's kind of do it somehow systematically uh okay and and the type set pattern, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess uh, one of the tasks was to like revisit the connection protocol, but uh, I, don't know, I, I, I would say that uh, uh, both are like, 
equally important. Maybe I would even prioritize the, the Aries V6 core and this these trades before we continue. Okay. Yeah, I would I would do the same. Um, and there's not a lot done in the connection stuff. I kind of wanted to talk about it too, but uh, we can you know, we can do that hmm. sometime later. So I'll put, um, but yeah. pull this one up a little bit uh, as a kind of a top priority. That may be that I would say like Mero can perhaps take this one since he already he implemented the resolver. He probably the most suitable person to integrate it. Uh, he knows a lot about it now, and uh, then the time step pattern. Um, and George is working on that, and my I might I might join in if I have a capacity. But I think these are the three important topics now. And yep. that's that's it, I guess. It's been a long one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long one, but a uh, good good one, productive, good discussion. Yep. All right. Pleasure to talk to you. Um, Likewise. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. It's almost here. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.